thank you to the New Jerusalem Singers for that beautiful song selection. May we now call this meeting to order. Good evening to all Zoom participants. Please make sure that you mute your microphone and make sure your camera is turned off. Thank you. I will be your moderator for this evening's session. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Springfield, Ohio Bible class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan, operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clipper Kinley, here in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Springfield branch was established in the year 1935. The president of our school here in Springfield is Dr. Rhonda Miller. Our vice president is Dr. Gurley Ramey, and our dean is Dr. Ronald Carr. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word of son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. And it has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet which would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in our English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and of his Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in his pure spirit state, he is inscrutable and incomprehensible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a Cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. 
Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form may only be seen in divine visions and understood by divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's, a, <clears throat> excuse me. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title may be obtained by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai, where he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof to how everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Bible class are as follows. First, is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race or nationality creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men, whereby man can be saved, saving the name, Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in a new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan, speak the truth. We would like to begin this evening's class with a prayer by Dr. Lamar Rhodes. Scripture 
by Dr. Jackie McCain. And our scripture readers are Dr. Jackie McCain and myself. Dr. Rhodes. I'd like to say good evening to the class. Good evening. Let, let us bow in our hearts and minds for a moment and give thanks unto Yahweh for giving us this opportunity once again before it's eternally too late to gather and hear that voice from heaven being manifest through these vessels. We pray that the vessels that come forth tonight, that you give them the words to speak and the understanding to pass on to the listeners, that our understanding might become greater. We thank you, Yahweh, for sending your son unto us to give us this opportunity to have eternal life through a knowledge of how you really are and actually exist. We thank you for all the things that you have brought unto us to aid us in our journey in this gospel, such as the charts, the pamphlets, the videos, all the things that you have made possible. We thank you for, and mostly and greater than anything else, we thank you for that gift of Yahshua Messiah, your son, that you brought unto us to save us from our sins through this knowledge and the gift of the Holy Spirit. All these things we give thanks for in the precious name of your only begotten son and our savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Tonight's scripture lesson will be Psalms, the 91st division. I'll be reading it from the <clears throat> King James Bible and certain the true and correct names. Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the, excuse me, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the prowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feather, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh to thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made Yahweh, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hand, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That was Psalms, the 91st division. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thank you, Dr. Lamar Rhodes and Dr. Jackie McKay. 
As a friendly reminder, I'd like to remind all participants to please make sure that your video is off and your microphone is muted. And now it is an honor and a pleasure to call on for our first speaker from our Springfield, Ohio class, Dr. Rosemary Turner. Dr. Turner. Good evening, brethren. Good I'm evening. so happy to be here this evening with all of you in sharing in this great gospel of Yahshua and the Messiah. I mean, it's been a lot of years and it doesn't matter how many years you've been a member of this class. The thing is, Yahweh's given it to us as we can, you know, little by little. We're not getting it all, as, all at once as he did, as Dr. Kinley got it in, in the year of 1931 on June the 6th. Yahweh caught this man up into the third heaven and gave him a divine vision and a divine revelation of Yahweh, our heavenly father, so that it, because that was foreordained and it's in everybody's Bible that that would happen, that this event would take place. That, that's hard to believe when, until you come to class and you start listening to the lectures and Yahshua starts showing you how this pattern works and how this is Yahweh Elohim. He is, as it says on this chart, the archetype or original pattern of the universe. He, he is Yahweh our Elohim. He truly is the archetype, which means original pattern of the universe. And let's go to in our everybody's Bible in Habakkuk 2 and 1. And I want to just share with you, I've, we've shared this a lot, but it's good to know that it's in everyone's Bible, whether you come to this Bible school or not. It's in your Bible, sitting there on your, on your shelf on your coffee table. And this was foreordained that the vision would come at the end of this age, the divine vision and revelation. So readers, do you have that Habakkuk two and one? Yes. And before you read that, uh, I want you to go over to is it second Peter two 19 where, or one 19, where it talks about. Holy men. Yes. Holy men. Yeah. Peter. Before I started, I mean, I came to this school as a child, but Yahweh just caused me to see a little bit here and a little bit there. So it doesn't matter how long you've been coming into this organization. Yahweh is the one who's reaching in and forming us and delivering us to the truth. But I, I remember hearing these things, but not hearing them. You know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. just it was just like a, a sing song. I started just memorizing things, but it's made it a reality. And, and when you look at the Bible itself, you know, you've got what we call the Old Testament and the New Testament, which that's a whole other lecture. The so-called New Testament, that's, uh, that is not, that's the biography of Yahshua the Messiah. And it's the letters that were written from the uh, apostles to the assemblies that were in Asia. See, that's what that was. And the, and the revelation, the Acts of the Apostles, that was written by Luke. That's not, this is not the New Testament. The New Testament is not written with pen and ink, but it's, it's the new covenant. It's written in your heart and in your mind. Mm -hmm. But Yahweh raised up these prophets, of, you know, these ones we see Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and all of them have either Yah or El in their name to show you that it wasn't the men writing. And that's what she's about to read before we go to Habakkuk. And it's really important to know that Yahweh has orchestrated this whole thing. Okay, so if you go over in Peter. Second Peter 1 and 20. Thank you. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. And why wouldn't that be? You know, because everybody uses the Bible, all the Christianity uses the Bible, but they come out with different meanings for things. He said, he said, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Read on. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, mm -hmm. but holy men of Yahweh 
spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So when you read the writings of Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, Habakkuk, all these prophets, those are not the writings out of a man's thoughts. Holy men of Yahweh spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. See, and is there a little more there or is that it? That's it. Okay, so when we, I asked for Habakkuk and a lot of people had never even heard of Habakkuk because they're looking at the big names like Isaiah, Jeremiah. We got what we call major prophets and minor prophets. The Holy Spirit is the one speaking through these men. So nobody is a minor prophet. These are, these are all prophets these, they're from Yahweh using vessels. Habakkuk was one of those men, see, and he wrote over in Habakkuk, the second chapter, if you can go there now, because we're, we're all leading back to this vision that we have received here at the end of this age. Habakkuk 2 and 1. Thank you. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower mm -hmm. and watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Now, just hold it just for a second. You know, back in the day when they, they had cities, they had um, town, they had walls around cities to protect them from, from enemies or intruders, and they were raised up. And that's what, and he's using that as an example. See, uh, hold it first, Dr. Teresa. Let's get Romans 1, 19 and 20, because we have to read our scriptures in a whole new way. We can't take it literal like a, like a newspaper. Romans 1 and 19. Yes, thank you. Because that which may be known of Yahweh, mm -hmm. it's manifest in them. For Yahweh has shown it unto them. For the creation of the world are, is, excuse me, for the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and his supernal nature so that they are without excuse. Okay, read that 20th verse again. For the invisible things of yes. him yes. from the creation of the world yes. are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. So our heavenly father, Yahweh, we all know that we can't see him. We can't smell him, taste him, touch him, hear him fill him with our hands he, he's invisible so he has made the creation reflect him so that we can learn that way it takes the natural things as is often taught in the school which is true it takes the natural things for us to understand the spiritual things see and that's what Habakkuk he's speaking under the influence of the Holy Spirit when he says I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower He's talking about being elevated in an elevated state. See, and read back on in Habakkuk. I will watch to see what he will say unto me. Yes. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. Right. And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that everyone may read it fluently. Now he's speaking to Habakkuk about a vision. See, and then as she goes on, he'll tell you when this vision will come in. You can continue. For verse three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but, the, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Now this is so, Yahweh speaking to Habakkuk. He said at the end, the vision will speak and not lie. It's exact. Yahweh has everything on a timetable. Uh, let's see. Tarry. I'm sorry. Though it tarry, wait for it. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely, uh, it will not tarry. And see, I've just put up the uh, chart on the ages and dispensations, which shows the creation abides within Yahweh or eternity. And this fiery cloud is just the same as the fiery cloud around the Moses chart. It's showing that everything abides within Yahweh. Everything on the chart is in this fiery cloud, showing that the creation abides within Yahweh or eternity. And the vision that Habakkuk had, he said, uh, read that, read that uh, again, Habakkuk 2 and 1, because I don't want to misquote it. 
Habakkuk 2 and 1. Thank you. I will stand upon my watch mm -hmm. and set me upon the tower yes. and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables yes. that everyone may read it fluently. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Right. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because mm -hmm. it will surely come. It will not tarry. So he's telling Habakkuk that the vision was not for right then when in a Habakkuk's time. But he said, at the end, this vision will speak and not lie. And though it tarry, wait for it. And he's talking about it being made plain upon tables. And that's why we have these charts in our school. These charts, Dr. Kinley received the divine vision and revelation that Habakkuk was talking about, that Yahweh was telling Habakkuk about, see? And that this vision was going to be made known at the end. Now we are at the end here. We are in the fourth age, with four, uh, the third physical age in the flesh, but we're on the fourth age, the present kingdom age. And after this, at the end of this age, see, we're right down here on the end. We're gonna go into immortality for the fifth, sixth and seventh ages to come, see? So at the end, we're at the end here. And this vision, Dr. Kinley claimed that he received this divine vision and revelation directly from Yahweh. And he said, don't just sit up here and believe me. Make me prove it till you're satisfied. Make me prove it. And you know, that reminds me in physical school, when you had math, you couldn't just throw down an answer. They said, show me your work, prove it, prove your work. Mm -hmm. So that way they know that you really understand what you're talking about, they, that you really get it. See, and Dr. Kinley said, make me prove it till you're satisfied. And the only way we really can't prove it, Yahweh's proven it himself to us through this miraculous pattern that he gave us. See, now we, let me go back to the, to the Moses chart. Now, I don't, let's see, we, we have a uh, pictured up here. It says Yahweh is spirit manifesting within the cloud, symbolizing eternity. That's what this fiery cloud is. And this was not uh, an idea that the artist had to show Yahweh. Yahweh used a cloud to depict himself. And he'll, it's annotated in Exodus uh, 13, is it 21, 13 or 1321? When he was bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt, they were down there in, coming out of darkness in slavery in Egypt. And I think it's uh, Exodus 13, 13 and 21. 21. Okay, thank you. You can go ahead and read. Okay, Exodus 13, 21. Yeah. And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud mm -hmm. to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire yes. to give them light to go by day and night. He led them. That, that fiery cloud was showing the presence of Yahweh, leading the children of Israel up out of Egypt, see? And then I think it's uh, Numbers 9 and 15. He, he's the one, they're following him. They're not leading the way. Nobody's you know, saying, okay, Yahweh, follow us. <laughs> they were entrapped in Egypt and took Yahweh to bring them out of there. So this is showing them, and when this is the migratory track that we have, displayed on this chart, and it's threefold. You'll see the Israelites, they started up in Canaan land, and Yahweh caused a famine in the land. And so in the meantime, Yahweh caused Joseph to be down here in Egypt and, and revealed to the Pharaoh that they needed to store up some food for, for famines. He had, the, they had a, I think Pharaoh had a dream about seven lean cows and any, anyway, he's, that's showing a, a famine. So, and then that they had to uh, store up their food so they would have it when the hard times came, see? So that's the only reason the Israelites, they had left Canaan land. They had to go where the food was, which it was down in Egypt. So there's a trek. See, there, actually it's a circuit. It's starting in Canaan land. They go down here into Egypt. 
And then there was a Pharaoh that rose up that didn't know Joseph. See, that first Pharaoh, he was pleased with Joseph and he put him like second in charge. That this other Pharaoh, he got afraid of how the Israelites were multiplying, see, in the land. And he was afraid that if another country would want to overtake them, the Israelites could join up with them and they could easily overtake the Egyptians. So he uh, enslaved them. He enslaved them. So that's how they were in bondage. That's why the bottom of this chart is in blackness and darkness, showing that bondage in the land, that, that ignorance. So he kept them in, they were slaves. So Yahweh had a plan already to deliver them up out of there. I mean, Yahweh's got a plan. It's, you didn't, we don't have to worry about Yahweh figuring nothing out. He's got a plan for all of us. And we're all going through the same track. We're, we start out in darkness and ignorance, and by the grace of Yahweh, he brings us out of there, and then he feeds us, just like he fed them in the wilderness. He rained down manna <laughs> for them. The, they bread from heaven is what it's called. I think that's in Psalm 78 somewhere. It talks about the corn from heaven. This is from Yahweh. He fed them in the wilderness, and then their offspring are the ones that went over in to Canaan land, because there was a whole lot of, of drama in the wilderness where the Israelites disobeyed Yahweh. And he said, none of you are coming out, but your offspring. And that is showing how it's not our physical bodies that go on into the, to heaven. It's our inner man. See that, that offspring represents that inner man. See going in on into Canaan land, the land flowing with milk and honey, a man that a land that they didn't have to farm, that it was already in fruition. All they had to do was partake. And that's what, how, what we're going through. We start out in darkness and ignorance under the influence of that satanic spirit. Mm -hmm. See, uh, let me, I'll, before I digress into that, I want to show you here on this chart. It's showing Moses up here in the mountain. Now, so get Exodus 24 and 1, and let's just go from there. Exodus 24 and verse 1. And Mr. Henderson, will you help me with the five-minute chart? Because I'm going to probably forget to put it up <laughs> to know I've, what, when I, how much time I have left. Exodus 24 and 1. Yes. And he said unto Moses, come up, to, come up unto Yahweh, thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And you see that, that picture on, his, on this chart. You see the, the 70 elders there. You've got Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu here. And you've got Moses at the top of the mountain. This mountain is threefold. You've got the top of the mountain, the plateau of the mountain where the elders and uh, Aaron, Nadab, Deb, and Abihu were. And you've got the base of the mountain where the Israelites were gathered around. And you can find that if you read in the 19th chapter of Exodus, it talks about how the Israelites were gathered at the base of the mountain. So uh, go ahead, uh, Teresa, I'm sorry for interrupting. Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. You want verse 10, 9 now? Uh, well, go I ahead. At verse 2. Yeah, okay, go ahead from there. And Moses alone shall come near Yahweh, mm -hmm. but they shall not come nigh. Right. Neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and, he, and told all the words of Yahweh and all the judgments. And all the people answered with, with one voice and mm -hmm. said, all the words which Yahweh hath said will we do. And that sound like a wedding? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I do. I promise to do this and that and the other. Okay, mm -hmm. read on. Verse 4, and Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill mm -hmm. and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. sent young men of the children of Israel which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. And Moses took half of the blood and put mm -hmm. it in basins, and half the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and yeah. read it in the audience of the people. 
-hmm. And they said, all that Yahweh has said, will we do and be obedient. This is the, this this covenant with Israel in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And it's sealed with blood. Okay, read on. Verse 8. And Moses took the blood. Excuse me. That's okay. Go ahead. Continue. Verse 8. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which Yahweh has made with you concerning all these words. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. Mm -hmm. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Okay, something miraculous that you don't hear about in church. I mean, I I didn't go to church except on Easter when I was a young girl because I wanted a new dress. But they they don't talk about this. I haven't heard them discuss them seeing anything up in this mountain. Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and says they saw what? The Elohim of Israel. All right. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. So they actually saw the Elohim of Israel. They saw, and in the King James, it says, they saw the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then over in John, it says, no man has seen God at any time. So Mm -hmm. you see, you need the real true names and titles in order to understand what Yahweh's telling us. They saw the Elohim of Israel. That's Yahweh in shape and form seen only in divine visions and revelation that they didn't see Yahweh because Yahweh is spirit. See, he's, he's made up these nine divine attributes, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. These are the nine major attributes of Yahweh. He is spirit. We can't see spirit or detect him with any of our senses. So Yahweh knowing this, And I believe the moderator says that Yahweh, knowing this, takes on shape and form. See, he took it on up here in the mount, and it looked like a man. But actually, we are made in his likeness and image. So that's why it looked like a man. They saw the Elohim of Israel. This is not flesh and blood. This is a spirit embodiment of Yah. This is Yahweh in, in this sonship degree. See, that's Yahweh. And Okay, read on. Verse 11. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Mm -hmm. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. And they were not eating ham sandwiches or lamb sandwiches or nothing. (laughs) And that, you know, that's another thing. You know, we're getting close to what they call Easter time. And Mm -hmm. it is not Easter. This was the, the start of the Passover, not Easter. And I often see when Yahweh told him over in the 12th chapter, he didn't say take out a ham, but we all run and get our honey baked ham (laughs) for (laughs) Easter. He said, take out a lamb. And that true lamb is Yahshua, the Messiah. But no, he said, and they all saw Elohim and did eat and drink. That was spiritual eating. That was communion. See, read on. Verse 12, and Uh Yahweh said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. Yes. And Moses rose up and his minister, Joshua. And see, it says Joshua in the King James, but this is Joshua. This is not, he was back there with them. We're mm-hmm. learning a lot down here. Like Frank Lewis says, we learn a lot down here at this school. That mm-hmm. his, his minister's name was Yahshua, not Joshua. And that was Yahshua with him back there, the same one that manifested through the loins of Mary as our Savior. This is Yahshua. Yahweh's running this show, and he was in flesh. This was him, mm-hmm. Yahweh manifested in the flesh back there. But up here in the mountain, Yahweh Elohim, that's him in shape and form, a spirit embodiment. See, and then as you'll see on the top of this chart, you can see Yahweh Elohim, and then you'll see this looks like this is a threefold 
structure up here. This is an intangible tabernacle. This is indicating that this, this uh, spirit embodiment of Elohim, he transfigured into this intangible tabernacle and then back into himself in that embodiment. And then you'll see that it looks like half of him and he just blends into the creation by the pattern. And the pattern as it's laid out here is just like the tabernacle threefold. The tabernacle itself had a most holy place, a holy place and a court roundabout, three compartments, yet one tabernacle. And I'm pointing to the intangible tabernacle. And when Yahweh Elohim transfigured back into himself, it, he, it shows, he's showing Moses how he gave birth to the creation, the creation by the pattern, the creation by Yahweh Elohim. This is why it's laid out in tables. Remember Habakkuk said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables. And on tables, you have information displayed sideways and up and down, showing in blocks and plates, what we call. And you've got the, the chaosus displayed. You've got the days of the creation. It's not actually six days that it took Yahweh to create. See, it didn't take him six days. He slowed it down to show this to Moses. This is such a, a tremendous mystery that's been shown to us. This, there was no six-day creation. He, took, he slowed it down to, in six solar days to show it to Moses. That's what he's showing Moses up here in the mountain. That's why Moses, when he wrote Genesis, he, in the first chapter of Genesis, just go over to Genesis 1 and 1 and read that. And you'll see that he's seeing, he's recording something that he saw when he was up here in the mountain. We didn't know that before. When we, yeah. I, yeah, when we used to read Genesis, we thought, okay, this is the real beginning. This is the beginning of what? What Moses saw up here in the mountain, the vision. Okay, go ahead and read, please. Genesis 1 and 1. Yeah. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Yes. And the yeah. earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Yes. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. Mm -hmm. And Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw the light that it was good. And he's not talking about the S-U-N in the sky. Right. Dr. Kinley explained to us that that was a cosmic light because Yahweh is light. Yahweh Elohim is light. He wasn't talking about that planet. Okay, read on. And Yahweh divided the light from the darkness. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh, and excuse me, and Elohim called the light day yes. and the darkness he called night. Right. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now that's the evening and the morning were the first day, that's what he saw on that first day that he was up there in the mountain. And you'll see it's divided. He's, he's talking about being the, the, the read light a couple, from the darkness. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a division described. Of, he divided the light from the darkness. Read on. Six verse. And Yahweh, excuse me, and Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters right. and let it divide the waters from the waters. There's that division again, divide the waters from the waters. Read on. And Elohim made the firmament and divided the waters from the waters. Yes. Divided the waters which were under the firmament mm -hmm. from the waters which were above the firmament. Right. And it was so. Mm -hmm. And Elohim called the firmament heaven, yes. and the evening and the morning were the second day. So he's describing what he's seeing on a day-by-day -day account of this creation. And it's all following the divine pattern of the universe, because it's, remember, Yahweh Elohim giving birth to the creation. He's showing Moses how he gave birth to the creation. This is a great mystery that we didn't know. That's why you get confused on your own and you think, well, it took God six days to create the heaven and earth. No, it didn't. It, he slowed it down in six days to show it to Moses who was recording it. 
he was recording what he saw. See, it, it's be- that's one of the great mysteries down here that's been given to us to know that Yahweh, this is the creation by the pattern. And everything, just like the moderator says at the beginning of class, nothing escapes the pattern. See, let me go to the green chart. Okay, this, is, this chart says the creator, and it's listed as Yahweh, imaged Elohim by his creation. And see, that's showing Yahshua because he manifested in the physical. The creator imaged by his creation. That's the same as Romans 1, 19 and 20. It takes a natural to understand the spiritual. Yahweh has broken it down for us so we can understand our heavenly father. When you say spirit, I used to just think, okay, I don't know what that is. And it's spooky, but that's what Yahweh is. He is spirit. Spirit is substance, source, and law, eternity. See, I, I know when I used to, when, way back when I was in high school and I was in the biology class, I had a really good teacher, uh, but he, he said one thing that all the scientists want to know, what is life? What is life? See, a biology means the study of life, but they only, only could see the physical side. You know, they'd look at a cell and they'd see that there was cytoplasm. You know, there was, they could see that it was threefold. And see, I didn't really know enough. I was coming to class, but I knew that there was a difference between, between what that man could teach me and what I could learn down at class. Everything's threefold. The cell, the nucleus, the nucleolus, and the cell body. And they call that cytoplasm, you see? But he said, they call that the stuff of life. But they didn't really know what life was. That's spirit, Yahweh, spirit, substance source and law, law, see, eternity. You got the law of gravity. It, that's just a law that we live under. If you fall off of a, of a skyscraper, no matter how nice you are or how old you are, you know, or, you know, you're going to splat just like anything else falling. It's the law of gravity. We live under these laws, see, but see, we got, see this word philo, progenitiveness, uh, this whole chart describes that. That's philo, that means love. And progenitive, that's talking about offspring. So it's the instinctive love of a parent for the offspring, see? That's what this is. And Yahweh is our mother and our father. He's our parent. And he's broken himself down so that we can understand something about him as he really is and actually exists. Sometimes, you know, I used to just want to see the physical side of it. Okay, I want to understand about the brain. I want to understand about how insects do. I want to understand all. I loved it. I loved that. But I never connected it. Yahweh caused me to see the connection between learning these physical things and what it means in the spirit. See, when you look in, look in this uh, cloud in the center of this chart, you'll see that we've depicted Elohim just as Moses saw him in the mountain, see? And it's showing these nine major divine attributes of intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. And they're in a set position. You have intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge is in the most holy place area of this figure, see? And beauty, love, and justice falls there in the holy place area of this figure. Foundation, power, and strength. See, that's in the court roundabout. And if you look at uh, all these examples, point to Yahweh Elohim, his makeup. You look at the man. We have nine major systems in our body. And it's not just that we have nine. There's nine here. There's nine there. But look, we've got the nervous system the reproductive system and the endocrine system, those line up with intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge. They line up in the, in the way they function and everything. I mean, it's, that's how they're set in the most holy place of, of your tabernacle, see? Then you've got respiratory, circulatory, and excretory. And those line up with beauty, see? 
the breath of life being, being you, you breathe in that oxygen in your body, that's showing Yahweh's beauty. And circulatory is lines up with love. And that's the love of Yahweh to spread this oxygen all around your body, see? And the expiratory, that's justice because that's where you discern the good from the bad. Your body's discerning what you don't need and casting it out. See, when you exhale, you're getting rid of carbon dioxide. See, so that's a part of your excretory system. See, it's just beautiful how he's made us. The nice. foundation is your digestive system, what you eat, what builds up your body. Isn't that foundation? Power and strength that's showing the muscular and the skeletal systems. That's power and strength in your body. And as you get older, you start feeling the weaknesses there. We were just talking about how when the weather's cold and rainy, how your bones ache. You know, but we're talking about these physical bodies, these bodies that are meant to age and decay. You know, this is not the body that shall be. So yeah, we're, those things are gonna manifest. But just to see what they mean is such beauty, beauty that Yahweh gives us. See, and that's how we're lined up according to this tabernacle. In the tabernacle, you had the most holy place, the holy place, and the court roundabout. Line, see, it's lined up right here by Yahweh Elohim. You got the most holy place, the Ark of the Covenant, and you got images that indicate Michael and Gabriel, Michael being the warrior and Gabriel being the messenger. And so it's manifested in your nervous system that you have, you have messages being sent, see? And you, you've got sensory, mo motor and sensory function in your brain, see? That's showing this act of the warrior and the messenger. That's manifested in your brain for a reason. It's showing that this is the throne of Yahweh up here. This is where you think. This is where you take things in. See, this is, this is nothing to play with. That, oh my goodness, our body is, is the temple of Yahweh. And this is the throne of Yahweh right here. This is where you think, see, where you feel. This is, that you just got to get your mind right. Pray to Yahshua and see, he is that all-seeing eye. You can't hide from yourself. You, can't, you can do things you think in the dark and you can't hide. You can't hide. Yahweh is ever present. He's present with you all at all times. See, and then down here in the thoracic cavity, you where this beauty, love, and justice is, you've got the, the altar of incense where incense was burned to give a pleasant savor unto Yahweh. See, and you've got the seven branch lampstand here. The seven branches was filled with oil, and then it would seek its own level out to the other branches seven land and it lit in the middle in the middle showing that that poured in the middle to show that fourth branch or where that's where Yahshua came in when you look at the seven ages and seven dispensations Yahshua came in in that 4000th year so these that that's where the key that's the focal point and your justice so you and you've got this showbread table of showbread here which is typical of your heart which is called the bread of life with the golden crown around the table and it's showing that coronary artery. We're just, this is how we're made folks. This is nothing to play with. And the court roundabout foundation, power and strength. And you've got the uh, altar of sacrifice down here where you've taken your food. Something has to die so that you and I can live from a physical standpoint, whether you're a vegetarian or, or a meatitarian. <laughs> A carnivore, if you like meat and vegetables, whatever you have, it's got to be plucked from its life source and offered up on your altar, which is, I'll, we'll show you on the other chart. But see, and, and then you've got the laven, the brazen laver where the priest had to wash and also this these had to be washed, the sacrifices. That's why it's showing blood in the water, see? And in your kidneys, it washes the blood. And then when you look at the migratory trek, that's indicative of the Red Sea, you see, because they crossed through that Red Sea. And the priest was anointed with holy anointing oil, showing that Holy Spirit and the priest being able to operate in this tabernacle. 
That's so beautiful because he's the true priest. Yahshua is operating on our tabernacle. That's who we want to be operating in our tabernacle, not that old satanic spirit. But see, this is laid out to show Yahweh Elohim is showing the pattern of the tabernacle, see, and is showing the migration, which is depicting Israel coming out of Egypt, being in the wilderness for 40 years, and then going on into Canaan land. You got the Adam. Everything is composed of atoms. All Everything. It's a proton, neutron, electron, maybe a different number of protons and neutrons because it's that's the atomic weight of whatever that substance is, but it's broken down into three main parts. See, threefold, yet one atom. It, it's so beautiful. And see, that electron goes round about, just like that court round about, see? And then you got the cell. Everything's made up of cells. People, uh, plants and animals are made up of cells. And you've got uh, the DNA, the RNA, and the cell body, see? The nucleus, the nucleolus, and the cell body. And there's more to a cell, but I can't go into all that. I mean, I, I'm just looking at the basics. And I used to, when I came to class, when I was going to school, it even helped me in physical school because I knew it was going to be whatever we studied was going to be threefold because of what I learned down here at class. And it was just another witness. You got the metamorphosis. That's showing how uh, the egg of the insect, the egg goes into a larva stage. It looks like that old ugly worm. <laughs> and then it eventually through, through these changes, it, it reaches adulthood, adulthood as a beautiful butterfly. This is showing the death, burial, and resurrection. All of it showing the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah are going from the egg state or to the glorified state. See, the seasons of the year. Why do we have to have these? I'm glad we're getting out of winter now, but that doesn't mean that we won't see some more snow before spring really comes to bloom. And you've got winter, spring, summer, see, and fall goes back in. It's a cycle. It's over and over. And I just love it when it gets to spring and summer because, you know, my old bones can't take it too much longer. And, you know, got the universe. You see how all the planets in our solar system revolve around the sun. And that's showing that Yahshua, the Messiah, he's the S-O-N. He is the king. He, who, he's controlling all of us. He's controlling these nine planets, showing like the nine attributes of Yahweh and the nine systems in the man's body. It's inescapable, folks. It's all showing the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Yahshua the Messiah. It's, it's beautiful how he's manifested all this. And there's so much more on this chart. You know, you look at uh, you look at these bones, the bones in the vertebrae. That's what makes us stand upright. And you've got cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. And well, didn't the Israelites had to carry wood? And it's, it's like a play on words, lumber and lumbar. <laughs> See, and sacral. This, this vertebrae, it, it protects the spinal cord. That's what's around the spinal cord. So it's not just hanging out there. <laughs> this is a very delicate instrument here. with showing these nerves coming, branching off of, coming out of the brain and, and, and connecting to, the whole, to your whole body, controlling your body. So you got these 12 cranial nerves and that's showing down here at the bottom of the chart. It shows how it interacts with your physical body. And this is showing that the Dr. Lejeune Gill used to talk about the 12 order of angels. And that's angels. You were talking about angels in heaven. That's indicative of your brain, your head cavity. And Yahweh's manifesting all these things. These nerves that control different parts of your body, that your nasal, olfactory, your optic, where you see all these parts of your body. I mean, not just in the head, everywhere. Your, the vagus nerve goes throughout the body. That's the typical of that satanic spirit wandering around in your body. He's a wanderer, see? There's just so much. Just sometimes when you get to yourself, look at these charts, look at the textbook and, and ask Yahshua to show you something. You know, you look at your head up here. You've got, uh, let me see if I'm looking at the clock right. Okay. Not much time left. Okay. 
about time for that five minute sign. But you look at your skull and you see it's divided into three major parts. Uh, you got, this is the frontal, frontal lobe, this is the front. And if you look at it from the side, there's the front and then there's sutures. Uh, per, this and this parietal section and then the occipital. So that's threefold. It's showing the ages and dispensations right on the side of our head. You got the, the lambdoidal suture that lines up with when Yahshua was on the cross and he's the lamb. See, the fontanelles showing the outpouring. You had a flood here and you had the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You got short age, a long age and a short age. We're in this short age, folks. It's just so beautiful when you see we are down here at the end where this vision was, was told to us that we would receive at the end of this age. I used to not want to hear about the end of the age because I was younger then and I thought I'm not ready to hear about the end of the world. But, you know, we better be ready because we're gone anyway. You're gone anyway. And even if the world doesn't end, we're going to end. We're going to end sometime or another. And this inner man is what is important. You've got the inner man and you've got the outer man. See, just like it shows on this chart. Man made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. Thank you, Yahshua, for showing us how we're made in your likeness and in your image. This breaks it down. See, this breaks down like just like the vessels we went over in the tabernacle. See, and all these, the priests had to operate in this tabernacle. And this chart shows how our physical body, the tabernacle of man, and then you've got man by the pattern broken down. So, so we can see these nine major vessels. We can see our brain. Doesn't a cloud, a brain look like a cloud? And it's gray and white matter. And most of the time you look up at clouds and they're gray and white, see? And you've got two eyes, but you don't see two different things. You see as one. And that's showing that one all seeing eye of Yahweh. You're seeing as one. And that's showing the two witnesses, Michael and Gabriel. They weren't up here looking at each other. They were looking at the cloud. See, Yahweh, he's the one. He's focusing in on showing us how to see him, see? It's just beautiful. And then here you see in the mouth of the man, it says law. <clears throat> and right in that Ark of the Covenant, that's where the law was placed, down in that chamber, the Ark of the Covenant, see? And that law, that pituitary gland in our bodies is right below the brain. So it, that's why it's showing in the mouth. And you've got the pituitary gland has an anterior lobe and a posterior lobe. And one of those lobes secretes seven hormones and the other one secretes three. That's almost 10, like the 10 commandments. That's why we know that it was written with seven on one side and three on the other, it, because it's showing the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, the three walking down through the seven ages and dispensations. It's gotta be seven and three, see? And that's how it is in our bodies as a witness. We don't have to argue about it. He's showing us what it is. And you look in your, in your lungs there, you've got, this is, we all want our lungs to work. That's a, take a deep breath and refresh yourself, see? And that's how that incense was a sweet smelling savor unto Yahweh. And this incense, this altar of incense demonstrates the prayers of Yahshua, the Messiah. He is the intercessor, see? And he is the bread of life, see? He said, I am that bread that came down from heaven. And that's your heart, four chambers of your heart. And remember, that's how you get the love, that oxygen pump throughout your whole body, showing the love of Yahweh, see, that love to share that oxygen. And whether you've got good cells or bad cells, you got cancer cells, they get love too. They get blood. And see that aorta, that's seven branch, seven main branches that pump out the oxygenated blood Really, it sits on top of the heart and it's pumping it throughout the body. That's like that light of the lampstand in the tabernacle. We're not just matching things up. Yahweh made us. Yahweh made us. Just like that song we used to sing, I'm glad Yahweh made me. 
And I'm glad Yahweh showed me how I'm made in his likeness and image and how it fits this tabernacle pattern, because that gives us faith in Yahshua the Messiah. We don't have a big picture of the, of the skeletal system, but look in some of your anatomy books and you'll see, you just wonder why is it that you got two bones in your forearm and it goes to one and goes into the body is, you know, he's showing how Yahshua made both one. Where is that in the Ephesians? Ephesians two. Two and one. I think it's two and like 13 or 14. Ephesians 2.13, but now in the Messiah, Yahshua, ye were sometimes were far off, are made not by the blood of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. I for want the, he, yeah, mm -hmm. for he is our peace. Right. Who hath made both one yes. and hath broken down the middle wall or partition between us. Yes. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment, contained in ordinances. Thank you, Julie. For to, for to make in himself of twain one new man. We have so twain. Making, one new man, so making peace. Mm -hmm. And you're, it's manifested in your legs, too. And you see, you got, uh, I don't forget which one is the tibia, which one's the fibula, but it's two bones, and it goes to your knee, and then you got the one long bone. It goes to the body. He's it's showing how he's making both one, making twain, making of twain one new man. See, so entered into that body. See, there's no more Jew and Gentile, but it's one. See, Yahweh has he has broken down that middle wall partition was the law that he imposed on Israel. It wasn't even given to us. And people make the mistake of taking the carnal ordinances that were given to Israel, not understanding what that, why those were given and thinking we can drag them over here into this present kingdom age and set them up for righteousness. These carnal ordinances were fulfilled. The Old Testament is fulfilled. And that you'll just read this chart, Matthew 5, 17, Yahshua came in to fulfill what was written in the law and the prophets, see? Mm -hmm. So, he put an end to these physical things. And now we have spiritual sacrifices. We have the law of the spirit governing in our hearts and in our minds. See, it's all been changed. This end doesn't mean that's the end of Yahshua. That means that's the end of the old way. It was imposed on Israel. We never had these physical sacrifices. But see, people using their own imaginations, trying to come up with a religion that they think this is going to please God because he's the one that gave it. Yeah, he gave it to Israel. He didn't give it to us. And it was for the time then present. And he, and he got rid of that and nailed it to the cross. So see, we need to come to Yahshua and let him show us the way. He had, he's given us this divine vision and revelation at the end of this age. So I'm happy to be here. And I pray that Yahshua will continue to bless me and to bless my brethren also. If anything, if anybody got anything out of what was said, all praises to Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 And thank you, Dr. Rosemary Turner. And now at this time for our second speaker from our Springfield, Ohio class, we'd like to call on the president of the Springfield class, Dr. Rhonda Miller. Dr. Miller. Good evening. Good evening. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, uh, my my uh, voice is about gone, but hopefully it'll come back. Uh, I certainly uh, enjoyed uh, what came forward from uh, the first speaker. Uh, and I am thankful uh, to Yahweh Elohim, see, that allow us to be able to set under the sound of his voice, see, where he is continuing to teach us and to strengthen us, see, in the knowledge, see, of our great creator, Yahweh. And it was so beautiful 
how the previous speaker broke it all down to show forth proof and evidence. See, this is not about blind faith, see, but it's knowing something for an assurity, see, about our Heavenly Father. Uh, get me Amos uh, 8 and 11, please. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. Yes, we can hear you. Amos 8. I just lost it. <laughs> Amos, Amos 11. 8. Thank you. Behold, the days come, saith Yah, Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Yahweh. See, so, see, so see, there's a famine in the land, and for from hearing the words of Yahweh. See, and it's in these schools, see, that was set up, see, by our founder and dean, Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley, uh, in the year of 1931, when he was given a divine vision and revelation straight from Yahweh. See, and whereas he was instruction instructed to. Uh, bring and teach to his people. I'm talking about Yahweh's people, see? And that's what these schools were born out of. Now, Dr. Kinley always stated that, uh, that in this, whatever he brought forth, see, in other words, to make him prove what he said, because there's no, there's no longer a blind faith, see? In other words, when you look at, can I have the ages and dispensations chart, please? When you look at how Yahweh set up, see, and uh, I did not know prior to coming in the class that there was anything such as uh, ages and dispensations with the creator. Uh, I was brought up at a young age in the Church of Christ. And I was taught to strive for, to earn my salvation uh, by working for the Lord uh, and to uh, follow the Ten Commandment, uh, whatnot, and be baptized in water, which I, I was. Uh, baptized in water. And I was also told that uh, when I received this baptism, a feeling would come over me that never came over, that had never come over me before. Uh, that would indicate to me that I had received the Holy Spirit. Well, I waited for 30 and then I said, well, I'll give an extension. And I waited for another 30 days. And this feeling did not come over me. And uh, from that point on, I felt condemned uh, because uh, I was baptized and I did not receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, so as I grew uh, a little older uh, and I'd done what I thought was a search to see if I could find another truth in uh, about the uh, creator, uh, I, I couldn't find it. So when I was approached, uh, I had family members that uh, attended uh, the school, the Institute of uh, Springfield Bible class and invited me to come, but uh, uh, I was not uh, impressed. Uh, because uh, at that point in my heart and mind, I figured no one knew anything about God or the creation or the creator. See, and so I'm thankful, see, that I was uh, set down, see, and caused to listen, see, uh, to the what was being taught. And one of the first things that uh, 
was brought to my attention was at the time that when I came in uh, was the names Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, the Messiah, see? And that was the thing that uh, startled me. And I said to myself, uh, this can't be true. But in the discourse, Dr. Henry Kefford Kenley was on the floor and he was going through the names and he was showing how the names was true. And at the end of his discord, he said to uh, make him prove it, see? And also he said to, uh, to search these things for, uh, for yourself. So in searching uh, these things out uh, about the name, I found when I opened a good dictionary or encyclopedia that I seen that the Hebrew name for Jesus was Yahshua. And so I further go on to uh, the library and I find that the Hebrew name was Yahweh and Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah. So those were the things that caught my attention and that uh, placed in my heart a desire to want to learn more. And so uh, any of us uh, would be eternally grateful, see, for the opportunity because we're talking about eternal life, see? So there is a famine in the land for hearing the truth, see? And there's not many places you could go that you will hear the genuine truth come from Yahweh Elohim himself. He's not operated any way different than what he operated with Moses, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. He always appeared to them in a vision, see, and showed them what thus says Yahweh. Now, forget me. Uh, the other thing I was listening to was uh, Dr. Turner. Uh, discourse was uh, and our moderation was uh, Amos uh, not Amos but Jude 1 and 3 and which is in our moderation is the eighth aim and this is what this school is about if you pick that up please Jude 3 beloved when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should that ye that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the sons. See, so that we should earnestly contend, see, for the for the uh, in uh, my King James Version, it says the uh, common salvation, see? And so this is what these schools are set up for, see, to help you find and know Yahweh as he actually is and actually exists, see? And to contend within that, see? And to keep it straight, see? And that's the most important thing. As the previous speaker said, we're down here on the end of the age. It could go out any time. And even if it doesn't go out any time, tomorrow is not promised to any of us. See, and today is the day of salvation. See, and Dr. Kinley always admonished us, you know, to preach this gospel as though it was your last day. See, mm -hmm. so I had them pull up the ages and dispensation because as I said, stated before, many of us was not aware, see, that Yahweh, see, had purpose, see, that he would do things at a particular age and in a particular dispensation, see. Now, we have here in the antediluvian age, see, it's for, um, and we call this the age of conscience, see, and it says, in Adam all die, see, and this here was the age where 
uh, Yahweh, see, placed Adam in the garden, see, and gave him a, a helpmate, see, where he took Eve out of Adam's side, see, uh, from a, a rib and called him, uh, the, uh, called her Eve woman, see, and Eve was created to be uh, Adam's helpmate, see, and there was a commandment given, see, to them that they couldn't touch, see, the fruit that was in the middle, uh, in the midst of the garden, see, and as story went on, see, uh, that uh, Eve partook of the fruit and gave it to Adam, see, and this is right where mankind, see, died in his conscience, see. In other words, uh, conscious to the, the understanding of the creator, see. And in that transgression, see, they were cast out of the garden, see. See, so as they went on, see, then that age, that second age, see, in other words, uh, Yahweh said the end of all flesh, I believe that was in Genesis, either the sixth or seventh chapter, that the age of all flesh had come before him, see? And that, so therefore, uh, Yahweh calls Noah, see? And this is where he gave Noah, see, the understanding on how to build the ark, see? And that ark was threefold. See, and that age ended with a flood, see? And there was, and you'll find, see? In other words, there was a contention for salvation back there, see? Because that ark was an ark of safety, see? And Noah preached for 120 years, see, that there was a flood, see, was going to transpire but because at that time that mankind had never seen uh rain because as the scriptures uh, uh, des described said that a mist came up see from the midst of the earth and watered the earth see so it was stated that at one time many followed uh noah see and uh when he preached for 120 years, see? But when it came time, see, to enter that ark, see, there was only eight souls, see, that entered that ark, see? And it was eight souls, see, the Yahweh destroyed, see, the earth plane with, with a flood and with, wa with water, see? And it was eight souls, see, that came over into the post-Diluvian age, See, and that is the third age, see. Now, in the uh in that age, see, this is where Yahweh, see, had given Moses, see, uh, the law, see, uh spoke down as in Exodus. See, and this is where we'll find uh can I get back to uh the uh, Moses chart? See, now this, this is where we find, see, that in Exodus, where the children of Israel, which Dr. Turner was meant, was speaking, that when they were uh, in bondage, see, down there in Egypt, see, in other words, Yahweh sent Moses, see, and Aaron, see, down into Egypt, see, uh, to invoke Pharaoh, see, to let his people go, see. And that's where those uh, 10 devastating plagues was poured out on Egypt before Pharaoh's mind uh, was changed, so to speak. And he allowed the children of Israel to leave up out of Egypt, see. Now, when leaving out of Egypt, see, in other words, that 10th plague, See, 
that was a plague of death. They they were in darkness, see, and and Yahweh had instructed, see, uh, Moses, see, that to tell the children of Israel, see, in other words, to slay a lamb, see, for the, for a household. See, and to put the blood on that four corners, see, of the of the of the lintels of the door, the top and on two sides and at the bottom, see, and see the and that the deaf angel, see, uh would pass over. And if that blood was not on the in the on that door, see, then the firstborn, see, of that household of man and beast, see would be would be slayed see in other words see that blood see of that lamb see and they had to eat all that lamb see and if it was any left over they had to destroy it see but they had to have that blood see on their door see and they had to have that lamb in them see and that was the way of escape See, that Yahweh made up out of Egypt, see. Then they had to cross that departed uh, water of the Red Sea, see, and it heaped up like as a door, see, and the children of Israel went through, see, on dry ground, see. In other words, we're setting up this migratory trip, track. In other words, it's interchangeable with the tabernacle pattern, see, see, uh, and the migratory trip, see. And it was when Yahweh, the children of Israel, passed on through the Red Sea on, on um, dry shot, see, whereas Pharaoh and their host, see, was pursuing uh, the, uh, the children of Israel, they drowned in that Red Sea, see? See, and, but the children of Israel safely got on into the wilderness of Sinai. That's where in the wilderness of Sinai you find, see, that Yahweh spoke to Moses, see, in the Exodus 24th chapter, see, you find that Moses was told to come up into the mount, see? And there in the mount, see, Yahweh Elohim, See, showed him, see, in a vision, see, the creation, the seven days of creation, see, and in 33 days, see, of the construction of that tabernacle pattern. Now, here's where uh, I want us to, to look at uh, closely, see, that we want to earnestly contend, see, uh, finish reading the rest of of uh, that, if you will, uh, of Jude. A couple more verses of that, because it's so important. Because we're down on the end of the age, and you find, see, at the end of each age, see, the satanic spirit, see, will show up, see, in other words, to try to turn you back. And so we want to keep this straight. In other words, Dr. Kinley gave us an admonishment, see, uh, to leave it like he left it. And there was a reason for that. He also stated that he had given us enough, see, to be saved, see. And that's the reason why it's so important, see, to keep it straight. He also said that if you under, could understand the pattern in, in real time, see, it would liberate you or free you from the, the satanic spirit, see, and doctrines of demons, see, see, and see, and it's what it says that See, right now, we're in perilous time. What are we talking about, perilous time? We're talking about our soul, see? That's the perilous time, see? So 
we want to keep our eyes on the prize and we want to make for certain that what we understand is that we have proof and evidence, see, and that it goes according to the tabernacle pattern. See, that's our measuring rod. See, and we had been admonished that if it doesn't go by that pattern, see, then to not to take it in, see. In other words, until we get proof and evidence, see, or if it don't go by that tabernacle pattern to throw it out. So that's why this, the tabernacle pattern is so diametrically important for us to know. See, that allowed, see, Dr. Uh, Turner, see, to break it down and show how we was made in the likeness and image of our creator. See, and it also, it'll show you how Yahweh have purpose, see, for us, see, to, to see and understand how he has accomplished our salvation. See, in other words, I always uh, look at Isaiah the 35 but about one highway. There are not many roads to leave, see, until Yahweh. There's only one road, see. In other words, bring me back. I'm probably going to jump backwards and forth here on the ages and dispensation uh, chart. Uh, where, as I said, he gave Moses. He took out one group of people, named them the Israelites. And one group of people, see, that we, we know as the Hebrews. See, in other words, there was no Gentiles when he led the children of Israel up out of Egypt, see, and gave Moses that law, see, to speak. And he spoke down to the children of Israel, see. And not only that, he gave Moses laws of how they were to worship him, see, and, and concerning uh, transgressions and, and what sacrifices. And uh, I think it said they had 600 and uh, 600 some thousand laws uh, or, or something like that. They had a lot of laws to the fact that a lot of times they wore what you call phylacteries on their wrists and in their hats and stuff so that they could look at them and see if they had made a transgression or whatnot. But anyway, he, there was no Gentiles, see? And if there was a Gentile, see, in order for them to be partakers, see, of the inheritance with Israel, they had to become proselyte, see? And all through the ages, see, now he's just been, see, and, and get me a uh, first Corinthians, I think it's the 10th chapter, is the why Yahweh was setting this up. This is where he was instituting, see, so that we would know, see, when Yahshua the Messiah come in, in Matthew uh, 5 and 17, when he says, think not, see, that I come to destroy the law and the prophets, but I come to fulfill, see? So what did he come to fulfill? All those things that were set down in the law and the prophets, see, for him to do is what he came to fulfill. See, do I have you picking up something? First Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would be not, excuse me, I'll start over. First Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual food, and they and did all drink the same spiritual drink. And okay. they drank. Okay, go ahead. For they drank of that spiritual rock that led them, and that rock was the Messiah. Okay, see, they all drank of the self-same thing. See, and that rock was the Messiah. See, see, so, and that was given to us, see, for an example, see, that we should not lust after uh, 
other thing. See, sometimes we want to go all up above the sun, moon, and the star. I, I remember Dr. Kenley always, uh, he, was, he would tell us, he said, you know, the grass, to some people, the grass seemed like it's greener on the other side. He said, but it's just as green on your side. See, so don't be deceived by thinking there's something better on the other side. In other words, we got this great gospel. And if we can just catch on to the things that's already been poured out and taught to us, we'll be doing good, see? So, uh, 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 so when we come on over, see, in other words, the world did not recognize, see, that there was an end of an age when Yahshua's Messiah came in and took off the flesh. Like I said, he come in, see, that was his purpose, to, to set this up, see, and fulfill those things that he had instituted, see, so those things could be moved out of the way from a physical standpoint, but we could look to them, to the law and the prophet, see, because that's what had the light in them, and to show us, see, that course of how we are to worship, see, in this age and dispensation, because once Yahshua Messiah took off the flesh, see, in other words, and poured out his spirit, uh, in other words, he promised that he would come back, see, and he would lead and he would guide us, see, and that he was the Holy Spirit, see. So in other words, when he poured out his flesh on the day of Pentecost, he fulfilled that, see. And then when we find out to the Jews first, see, and then seven years later to the Gentile, see, in other words, now, see, in other words, here, oh, Israel, see, Yahweh is a unity, see, mm -hmm. and we don't want to forget that and how Yahweh is choosing to operate. And as, and as the previous speaker said, see, now we're in this present kingdom age, see, so the only way that Yahweh will accept us, see, because all of our rags, this is filthy rags, uh, um, all of us are, you know, our righteousness, I'm going to put it that way, I think as in Isaiah 64 and 6, that all our righteousness is as filthy rags before Yahweh. We are unacceptable uh, to him. See, the only exception that he will accept is Yahshua the Messiah. See, so we want to always keep that in mind. Now, get me back to the Moses chart. I don't want to leave out the time because it may seem as though uh, 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 I, I, because I want to get to this point. Uh, if you get me back to the, to the Moses chart. Okay. Now, I want to get back up here and show where Moses was receiving the divine vision. See, up here, uh, of, of Yahweh on the seven days of creation. See, and I was trying to uh, think of uh, on uh, predestination, uh, having predestined us. Can somebody get that? Oh, having a free destiny from yeah. Ephesians. And and the reason why I'm I, I'm going uh this it's been on my on my heart and mind and I, and hopefully uh that through Yahshua to bring it out is that sometimes we get the sometimes when we're speaking with one another. And some have now the thought that they don't have to uh, give Yahshua the Messiah, that they uh, don't have to use Yahshua the Messiah, that they only have to use Yahweh. Uh, and in this present kingdom age, uh, Yahshua the Messiah, 
he has stated that he is the comforter. See, and we want to know, see, and understand why we have to accept that Yahshua the Messiah is the Savior. See, because that's what the word means, that Yahweh is salvation. And to understand that, hear, O Yahweh, that Yahweh, hear, O Israel, that, excuse me, I keep saying that wrong, but hear, O Israel, Yahweh is a unity. That's Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Mm -hmm. See, in other words, just like yourself, I, I'll take myself. I am a mother. I am a sister. I am an aunt. Um, and as a mother, I, I, I function as a mother, as a wife. I function as a wife. Yet and still, I'm one person. But I have different parts that I play, that I have to manifest. See, this is the self-same thing with Yahshua the Messiah. When Yahweh says, I, Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. In that state, he is operating as your savior. See, as it says, it didn't take all of Yahweh to bring this creation in. See, but Yahweh, see, have, he walked down through the ages and dispensations. See, in other words, in other, he, he, he was known as first El Shaddai. See, and then he revealed his name to Moses. See, in uh, Exodus, the third chapter, in the 11th verse. See, if you write those down and look it up. See, and gave Moses his name, which was Yahweh. See, and from there he was known as Yahweh Elohim. See, and then when he came in to manifest, see, to fulfill the laws of law and the prophets, see, in the usher in a new way of worship him. See, in other words, Yahweh commandment now is that we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, we want to look at how Yahweh showed Moses, see, how that it didn't take all of Yahweh, see, to bring in the creation. See, in other words, when he stepped into that anthropomorphic, uh, anthropomorphic for, form, see, as Elohim, see, and then from that form, see, he brought in the creation. In other words, he transferred, transformed into that threefold tabernacle pattern, see, as you're seeing up there in that vision, see? And then as you see the half of a man, see, then the whole creation, see, come forth out of Elohim or Yahweh Elohim, see? Now, it states, see, that the creation, see, itself, see? In other words, we're predestined to go back in the self-same way we came out. See, in other words, Yahshua the Messiah being our comforter. See, now let's look here at the tabernacle pattern. See, down here. Now, just like uh, you had down here when they got into the wilderness, see, the Sinai. See, in other words, they were never in any darkness. See, they uh, at all. Yahweh was that cloud that provided. See, that light by night, see, and the sun shine by day. See, in other words, he fed them manna. It says that their clothes, see, did not uh, 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 wear out, see, for those 40 years that they wandered, see, in the wilderness, see. And, and see, and then, in other words, then Yahweh caused the, the, the men that built that tabernacle power. He put his spirit in them. See, so that we know, see, that there was no error made in the construction of that tabernacle pattern. See, because uh, it was a type and, and a shadow and a copy, see, 
of the original archetype pattern of the universe, which was Yahshua the Messiah. See, in other words, once a year, see, there was an atonement made. See, and only the one high priest could go in before Yahweh. See, in other words, and he would take going there three trips for, for himself, for the children, and for the cleansing of that tabernacle. See, and it, and so the children of Israel was gathered around. They depended upon the success of that one high priest. See, to carry out. See the instructions of, of Yahweh, see, so that when that high priest would do so, then they would know, see, when he'd come out, see, them two low priests, they would go out and blow those trumpets, see, if good news, see, that they their sins have been for, forgiven for that year, see. I mean, it says once, see, do I have you... Uh, uh, having a, a script because it seems like I'm moving on past what I had you to read. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 5, and I'll uh -huh. go back in Jude. Okay. Ephesians 1 and 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahshua the Messiah to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. See, in whom, see. Mm -hmm. go ahead, go ahead. In whom see. we have redemption. Right, see, through so. His, mm -hmm. Go ahead, so we have redemption, what, through what? Through his blood. Through his blood, see. Uh -huh. See, and that's, and that's the thing that we have to hold on to. See, because... In uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter, uh, and I'm speeding up because I'm running out of time, because I hope that we can see that if if you don't remain with Yahshua and your as your savior, you're not you're you're not dressed properly. And <laughs> in, in other words, you're not clothed with the sun. See, and Yahweh is not going to accept anything other than Yahshua the Messiah. See, now it says here to stand in the holy place. See, in other words, not set, but stand in the holy place. That's in Matthew, the 24th chapter. See, in other words, when you're standing in the holy place, and I'm talking about the tabernacle pattern, the, the self-same thing is going on spiritually, see, that went on in the wilderness of Sinai with the children of Israel, only Theirs was physical and yours is spiritual uh, and or ours is spiritual. See, in other words, as the previous speaker, she went through this beautifully, Yahshua in her. In other words, here's the uh, Yahweh fed a manna in the wilderness. Here, Yahshua says, I am the bread of life. See, see, I am the light that lights every man. See, see, I am the intercessor. You, you see what I mean? Uh, for us. So what better? See, then it says that when he ascended and went on high, see, he set it on the right hand, see, of the throne. See, so here you got him setting, making intercession for us, see, Sitting on the right hand side of the throne. See, so here you got manifestation of your brain. See, it says a part uh, on the right hand side of your hemisphere of the brain. See, a lot of what, in other words, it in, it's responsible for interpreting what we see. See, in other words, when our vision comes. When we look at things, it says we see it with our 2020 vision, see, supposedly. In other words, the best vision we can have is 2020 vision. We still see upside down. See, that's what comes in to, to, to uh, uh, our uh, vision. See, but it's that right side. 
see that is responsible for interpreting what we see. It also allows us to see in 3D's uh, uh, dimensions and and whatnot. See, so everything that is happening, see, in our brain is pointing to the the spirit. You see what I mean? And that's one manifestations to show you. See that that we have a high priest. See that is able, see, to make intercessions for us, see, and to stand before the throne of Yahweh, see, on our behalf. See, we did not choose, uh, 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 you know, the world says, well, you know, you choose uh, uh, Christ. See, the scripture said we did not choose. He chose us, see, and what we want to be, as in Revelations, the 12th chapter and, and the first birth, we want to be clothed in the sun. See, and that was evident, see, when, when uh, Yahshua the Messiah said, see, it is finished, see, and he was uh, speared in the side, see, and forth ran blood and water. See, what happened, see, with evidence of when that woman, see, was taken out of Adam, see, then Satan, See, was waiting there in the garden, see, to deceive her. And, and, and he, didn't, he didn't use nothing magnificent. See, he used a simple thing. In other words, two or three words, see, to deceive her into thinking that she would be, you know, more knowledgeable and whatnot. See, same way with uh, uh, the one that Esau uh in other words, he sold his uh, birthright, you know, for a piece of bread. You see what I mean? So it don't take much to get you off guard and led aside. See, so what we want is to uh, keep it straight. See, in other words, stand in Yahshua the Messiah. See, and and use the tabernacle pattern and see and the things that are made and see and to search this thing out and make for certain see that we are for certain of what we are taking in our household see as fact see just like uh in isaiah 66 and 17 you know the hebrews was given dietary uh laws See, and one of them was uh, uh, to not, they weren't able to eat uh, pork or swine. And uh, Yahweh had said, well, you know, those with cloven foot and uh, the chew the cud, uh, those were clean. See, but the ones that didn't chew the cud, see, wasn't clean. So see, that's what a hog, a hog, he doesn't, he, he eats, he, he never looks up. <laughs> He eats whatever is laid before him and keep on going. See, and those that chew the cud, in other words, when they go to eat a meal, they chew it so finely, you know, before they take it in their system and digest it. See, and so that's important for us spiritually to take within ourselves, see, and make for certain that uh, the things that uh, we're hearing and we're being taught, see, is to write these scriptures down, you know, and to meditate on these things and make for certain, see, that these things are of Yahweh because it's a satanic spirit. See, he's out there. He is a natural Bruce beast. See, and his job is to deceive, see, and to take as many with him. See, and as I said, we want to be clothed with the sun and not naked. Job, Job, Job 26, I think in six says that, that hell is naked and so is destruction. See, when Satan and his host, see, was cast out, see, into the earth plane. See, they was, they was cast out, see, into everlasting darkness see, and reserved uh, for the lake of fire. 
See, and if, and as I was saying, as we was predestined the self same way, see that we're to go back, go back in, uh, to when this is closed out. I think it's First uh, uh, Corinthians, the fifteenth chapter. Uh, get me that where, uh, oh, oh, death, where is thy victory? Uh, I can't think of it right now. Where, in other words, we all have to give it up to Yahshua, and then. He gives it up to the Father. I want to end with that verse. 1 Corinthians 15 and 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in him. Right. See, that our labor is not in vain in him. See, so and that, so what we have to keep mindful is that Yahshua the Messiah is our savior. See, and he is able to present us faultless See, before the throne of Yahweh. And so let's not forget our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, and what he has accomplished within us. And uh, all praises and glory go to Yahweh and Elohim through Yahshua the Messiah. Thank you. Hallelujah. And thank you, Dr. Rhonda Miller. Now at this time, we'd like to cordially invite our visitors and friends to join us for the YouTube broadcast of our Springfield Bible class. Zoom classes are broadcast on Tuesday and Thursday evenings from 7.30 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. And on Sunday from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. at the class building at 308 Montgomery Avenue. Participants, please remain muted until the host has ended our YouTube broadcast. Thank you. Now I would like to close this evening's class with the benediction taken from Jude verses 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let the class say, Hallelujah. <laughs>